This is an ASME dynamic system control division podcast. I'm the host of Hall, a social professor at the North Carolina State University. In today's episode, we are very honored to have Professor Jin Sun from University of Michigan as our guest. Welcome. Could you please give some introduction about yourself? Sure. Thank you, Hal, for the invitation. Uh, I am a professor in the Naval Architecture Marine Engineering Department at the University of Michigan. I also mm. uh, hold joint appointments in electrical engineering and the computer uh, engineering department, as yeah. well as the mechanical engineering department at the same university. Cool. Thank you for joining us. I think uh, well, we have some topics to discuss with you and learn from your experience and the knowledge. Over the last few decades, you have developed a highly regarded research program in the broad areas of control. Could you please share with us how you started your journey as a junior faculty and what's your core researcher focus? Sure, thank you. Uh, how, um, I guess my starting point uh, it was no different from uh, many of the others uh, after I finished my PhD degree uh, at the USC. Um, I started my tenure track position at Wayne State University at that mm -hmm. time was in the electrical and computer engineering department. And at that time I continued in the direction of my PhD research, um, which was robust adaptive control. Yeah. I focused mostly on the theoretical aspect of adaptive mm -hmm. control, uh, try to prove some more theory and to establish <laughs> robustness and the performance of adaptive control systems. Yeah. Uh, so then I got uh, a job offer uh, to work at Ford Research Lab. Uh, this was before I even get on to uh, to be established as a tenured professor. Uh -huh. So I thought it was a great opportunity to um, experience uh, and to solve some real world problems. So I went to industry, uh, but with a plan that I'm just going to spend a couple of years to understand uh, um, the industry and to get my hand dirty on some of the uh, the, the real world problems. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then I come back with those problems, uh, come back to academic. But mm. I ended up staying there uh, for 10 years. Oh. Yeah. Actually, after I spent five years at Ford, uh, I thought I would work there until my retirement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> many of my Ford colleagues, like just like what they do. Yeah. Uh, but then uh, after uh, about another five years, uh, <laughs> there is another opportunity uh, come to me in 2003. Uh -huh. So here I am, I'm, uh, you know, working in the uh, marine engineering uh, domain, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm carrying on uh, research projects in both uh, automotive uh, control, yeah, you know, continuing my uh, uh, industry uh, uh, working experience, and also um, on the marine engineering on the ship uh, control and the shipboard uh, power management. Uh, mm -hmm. So I call myself uh, amphibious uh, in the sense <laughs> that. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I touch both uh, uh, both sectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a very multidisciplinary research. Also, uh, I worked uh, in industry, like uh, under Philips Research North America for two years. I think it's good to have this kind of blend of both uh, industry and uh, academic academic uh, experience, right? To really understand the real world problem, but also to have in-depth investigation of some research topics, yeah. Uh, I think I really appreciate the experience I, I had in the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, yeah. within uh, those research work, can you give us some examples of your like uh, major research accomplishments? You think are very uh, significant, maybe you are very proud of? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if I should call those accomplishments, uh, but those are definitely things that 
I would like to reflect and feel I get satisfaction from, you know, uh, realizing that uh, uh, I've done that. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing is uh, who you did that with. So oh. along the, uh, you know, along the time, uh, the work with your colleagues, with your students, and to produce some relevant and useful results that, that brings the most uh, uh, satisfaction. Yeah. So I, I, I do like to mention a couple of things. Uh, yeah. One is uh, the book on robust adaptive control. Yeah. Um, and so this is a, one project that probably lasted the most of the time. Uh, it took us uh, probably around, eight to 10 years to complete. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the final product, uh, I think where I'm happy with, uh, mm -hmm. uh, given that uh, it is now, uh, you know, it has been used uh, by many people as a uh, textbook yeah. on this topic. Um, but I, I, I mean, for me, this is what, what I learned in doing this. It's, the most important uh, just uh, working that on that with uh, my advisor Petrus Iono. Um, mm. I you know we, we wrote this over and over and because at that time it was also uh, a fast developing uh, area. Um, yeah. So just in the process of learning what's coming out and try to perfect it, uh, so, uh, well, Petrus had told me how to apply the high standard, and <laughs> so, so that to me, yeah. it's a good learning experience post my, uh, you know, PhD training mm -hmm. yeah. and in early stage of, uh, you know, my uh, professional career. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the other one, the next one I like to mention is um, the most, uh, I, I feel it's the most significant project that I did uh, at Ford. This was um, uh, the gasoline direct injection, engine control. Mm. Uh, so at that time, it was a new technology mm. and uh, uh, we were lucky to have uh, the opportunity to work on the, uh, to, to, um, to see how the control uh, come to play to develop this technology. So right now, you know, the, if you look at the the Ford uh, product uh, line, this this engine of EcoBoost um, is used in many of the vehicles, and this gasoline direct injection engine was uh, the early version of that. And uh, um, so we developed, uh, you know, we started with the modeling, developed control systems, uh, and look at the off treatment uh, technology. Uh, so that was a really good uh, learning uh, and a productive uh, project for me. Um, and this was the, you know, the, 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 the uh, project that uh, worked with many of the colleagues, we continue with the collaboration until today. So to me, that was a success for that. That was a good indication of the, um, the success or, uh, you know, a good project where it's not just the technical outcome, but the relationship. Um, yeah, that it carries on, yeah. Yeah. So it time tested, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then the, I also like to mention this uh, uh, integrated power and the thermal management system. Mm. Um, so we have done this uh, with uh, a RPI project in the next car program and try to use the connectivity and uh, um, automation or autonomous system. Mm to achieve uh, fuel saving by up to 20%. Oh, um, 20%. And we yeah. recognize the opportunity of, you know, the interactions between the power and thermal management. 
Mm. Uh, and the, the, the control challenges because of the interaction and also because of the time scale uh, separation of the thermal and the power responses. So we were able to kind of exercise many of the advanced control uh, methodologies mm. uh, in terms of, um, you know, like predictive control and the modeling of the traffic system. Uh, and uh, uh, use estimation and the prediction, uh, in, integrate data-based and the model-based control. So uh, we have a couple of uh, PhD students uh, um, graduate from that. Uh, so that I feel like it's also uh, successful experience, I mean, good experience, rewarding experience. Yeah. Um, because the, this problem is also, I mean, also exists in the shipboard power system. So we were able to uh, extend this um, with the support from ONA to work on yeah. integrated power and thermal management. Mm -hmm. shipboard. Yeah, but overall, we feel like, I feel like this, the theme of integration is uh, uh, is everywhere in our control uh, problems uh, or in the in, in the problems that we're dealing with. Another example is the hybrid energy storage. Uh, you know, you have a different energy storage system, um, battery, ultra capacity, flywheel, mm -hmm. um, but for any application, uh, usually you don't have a single device yeah. that serves all the purpose, give you all the attributes you want. I see. So to integrate them and how do you combine them so that you can leverage the complementary features of different yeah. technology. I mean, that's yeah. what control uh, is about. Uh, and to, to integrate the system and make a coherent, make a solution that uh, coordinate those uh, different subsystems uh, yeah. and deliver the, the, the robust and optimal performance. Uh, so anyway, I think that I, I, my, my point is those different project was give us uh, different experience and not only in developing technology, but in developing relationships uh, mm -hmm. and the training uh, students. Uh, I think that's uh, a lot of like a uh, very cool projects and also I think it's also useful projects. I think uh, I learned quite a lot of control methods. But I really maybe use that uh, that can be used uh, in the real world uh, industry. I think uh, your work uh, really uh, not only has theoretical depth, but also real world application. I think that's very uh, exciting. The book uh, you, you published, the robust adaptive control. I thought it have uh, more than seven uh, thousand citations. Is there some like a secret of why it has such a high impact? <laughs> well, uh, well, thank you. I. Uh, I don't have any secret. I think that, uh, you know, those are the results that oh. comes. And this, this uh, of course, you know, we are happy that uh, the people um, are citing it, but that's not what we do when you do the research. We don't <laughs> think about the citations. It's right? just not everything that uh, we apply to, to solve the problem. Yeah, that that's okay. just uh, follows naturally. I think if people, I mean, it, this is like doing any other work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so if we focus on doing the uh, the good research, then mm -hmm. this will follow. I think that's one thing I I I give credit to. Uh, Professor Pedro Siano, uh, as I mentioned, you know, he has yeah. very high standard. Uh, <laughs> so we revise it over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of effort that put into this. Of yeah, course, yeah. I'm happy to see people. <laughs> I kind of uh, scholars. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. I think uh, in addition to those like uh, products or achievements, you have substantial research programs in automotive and the marine industry. How do you establish those products and the collaborations? 
in two different uh, industry sectors. Yeah. Well, uh, as you know, control is a generic technology, uh, yeah. basic, specifically in terms of uh, methodology and uh, tools. Uh, so that's why we have control uh, faculty in mechanical, electrical, electrical yeah. uh, chemical engineering departments, right? Yeah. And so yeah. I am in the marine naval yeah. architecture. Also in your department, yeah. Engineering <laughs> department, yeah. I feel like those two sectors, they are both in mm. transportation mm. and they move things around, but the different things at different mm. scales. So the two industry has, uh, have a lot of uh, uh, common ground. Mm -hmm. um, and right now they are both going through some significant transformations with uh, mm -hmm. this technology advancement in electrification, digitalization uh, and autonomy. Um, and they both uh, had to deal with uh, the emissions. Uh, they have significant impact on mm -hmm. the climate control. So now this uh, decarbonization uh, strategy uh, yeah. have, uh, I mean, they are driving both industry in the direction for electrification, for example. Yes, yeah. So I feel like they have a lot to learn from each other. Mm -hmm. And I, as, you know, as individual across the two, uh, I can see there's a lot of opportunity for cross uh, fertilization. Uh, fertilization. Yeah, uh, yeah. But of course, there are also significant differences Mm -hmm. Cultures are different, uh, mm -hmm. the legacies, um, the ecosystem, um, and the customers they serve and the supply chains that support the two industries uh, are different. You know, it, like the ship, the big ship, once it's designed and built, it's supposed to last 40, 30 to 40 years. Okay, the I see. The industry had. Yeah, yeah. A much shorter life cycle for the product. Yeah, yeah. So, but as, so overall, I, I feel like I was lucky to have experience in both sectors. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have the benefit of learning from uh, both sectors and also contribute to both. Uh, so the collaboration was really established through uh, joint projects and person-to-person -person interactions. Yeah. Um, so it, I find it's re personally really interesting and also rewarding mm. to understand and to, to appreciate the differences. Um, so the modeling uh, is a big effort of uh, our research program. And I through see. the modeling <laughs> effort, uh, yeah. we can understand and appreciate the difference. Um, so yeah, I, I do feel there's a, a great opportunity for uh, this cross fertilization uh, of uh, those different industries sec sectors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You mentioned that the, the culture is also different, and uh, maybe because uh, for the marine industry, as you mentioned, uh, the vehicles will be de designed to last longer. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit? Of what do you mean? The culture is also different in the two uh, sectors. Yeah. Well, I think that every uh, community had some cultures, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, I think that you know the 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 because the asset is so so huge the uh, mm. people that, that also drive the development uh, I think that the the, the marine industry uh, in terms of technology development or adoption uh, is more conservative oh, yeah understandably so right <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know when they make when they commit, they have to think about over the life cycle yeah. and whether it can be upgraded and how to do that. Yeah. But auto industry uh, don't have that. 
And also the, I think the marine industry is more uh, localized in some sense. For yeah. example, uh, yeah. US does not have a big marine industry. Oh, uh, okay. have a shipbuilding industry. Oh, we oh. Only have the navies. Navy, okay. So a lot of our research uh, is basically supported by uh, ONA. But in the other part, like uh, Korean, for example, or mm -hmm. take Europe as example, then the their uh, marine engineering is driven by uh, other forces. Mm -hmm. There's blue economy, you know, yeah. the renewable energy and all that. Yeah. yeah, but I think that a lot of things, it's hard to describe, but when you work in the industry, you feel that. And especially if you work in different industry, you come into that, you feel it. Uh, I think that's one part of the, 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 the good thing in doing the research is that you recognize those, uh, those differences and that becomes part of the discovery in, in a way. Right, right. I think uh, uh, every like uh, sector, each sector has their own culture. Like for example, uh, similar to the marine industry, uh, I work on medical robots, like uh, robots for surgery. The doctors, they, they are kind of very conservative. Uh, they don't want to use uh, like a, a new robotic device and uh, they don't want to uh, use uh, AI. Very easy. I mean, I think that they have pretty high standard to make sure it works, it's safe, right? I think, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, like um, uh, to understand the customer's needs is really important to combine with our uh, engineering solutions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, especially you want to make, a, you know, you, you want the solution to be real, right? So it needs to be implemented yes. by the others who can accept that, who can yeah. internalize it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think it's also interesting to uh, to understand that part, to, to learn about that part. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is really important because uh, uh, to make that really, really useful, right? Understand each other's language, each other's like uh, culture is really crucial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You mentioned that you studied in uh, academia and worked in industry for 10 years before uh, getting back to academia. How did uh, your industry experience change or shape your perspectives? Uh, oh, very much. Uh, oh. I can summarize maybe in the following um, few aspects. One is mm. uh, on how we pick up the problem or the problem mm. formulation. I think now I'm trying to uh, solve the problem that I feel uh, it's the right problem, it's interesting problem, but it's also mm -hmm. relevant problem. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't do uh, the generic solutions. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. we try to start from a concrete problem um, and motivate the research from there and finding a solution. Um, but of course, uh, you know, stay, I mean, working academic, we have to go beyond just finding a solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so then the next step is once we solve one specific problem, mm -hmm. then how do we do the next level of the abstraction yeah, yeah. and extension and identified other problems that had similar characteristics to apply that. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of shaped my way of uh, picking up the problem and yeah. also following up with uh, how do we uh, carry out the academic research right, right. with relevance, but also with, uh, you know, we, 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 with the, uh, the contribution to the general methodology uh, domain or uh, contribute to more generic solution. But I try to 
order it in a way that it's not the generic solution first, then the specific solution the second. It's the other way around. So uh, yeah. that's that's I think that's one uh, aspect. The other aspect is I really like to focus on understanding the underlying physics. Mm. Um, you know, we tend to just say we have a model and we look at the input output responses, whether it's a mechanical system or it's an electrical system, whether it's for a car or for a ship, it doesn't matter. It's just the input output responses. And mm. that's one way to look at it. Yeah. But now, but I feel like it's more interesting that we look at underlying physics mm. and we apply the first principles so that we can explain those responses. Um, and also this put, uh, uh, this helps us to formulate the constraints because a lot of the solutions um, is dictated by the constraints and those constraints cannot be generic. Right, it, it, it's always uh, driven by the underlying physics. So I feel like understanding the underlying physics can help us to formulate or identify those constraints. Um, so yeah. in that sense, I think that uh, my industry experience had shaped my perspective. I think that's really, really uh, insightful, inspiring from uh, to me. <laughs> I think, uh, uh, as you said, it's not only to maybe answer a question, also to how to formulate a question, right? Um, identify the right question. Uh, um, uh, remember, there's a term called needs framing, right? Uh, identify the, the MIT needs uh, in that uh, application domain, right? Then ask the right question, relevant uh, question. I think that's one aspect. The second aspect you mentioned, like, um, uh, underlying physics. Uh, I, re I remember Elon Musk also really promote uh, principle-based thinking, right? Go mm -hmm. back to the first principle instead yeah. of being from incremental innovation, right? Really think about the fundamental problems, not only, yeah. you know, kind of like, um, not, not the fundamental ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. I have another question. Yeah, you are from the Department of Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering Department. Yeah, it's a unique program. Could you please introduce your department to our audience? Sure, my pleasure. Um, okay. So, so Naval Architecture Marine Engineering Department at Michigan, uh, it, it is indeed very special. Um, it has long history. It was established over 140 years ago. Wow. Uh, and to my knowledge, it is the only such program uh, with a marine focus. Uh, oh. in the U.S. Oh. Uh, within the top 10 engineering schools. Because oh. uh, we have a uh, degree from uh, bachelor to PhD program uh, mm -hmm. all the way through. Um, so the department has a uh, very strong focus and uh, sustained uh, leadership in the areas such as hydrodynamics, structure, ship design. Mm -hmm. And those are the traditional uh, naval architecture uh, uh, disciplines. Uh, but more recently, uh, it has also been expanded to um, topics like robotics, control, mm -hmm. and autonomy. So within the College of Engineering, uh, I think our students really enjoy the benefit of um, being in the small and close net department. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, the benefit of being uh, connected, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time also enjoy the comprehensive program offered by the big college, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the wow. student can, you know, um, get the, uh, can, can sign up any class uh, within the other department with discipline mm -hmm. and also with uh, School of Music, for example, oh. um, and uh, philosophy, because the University oh. of Michigan has oh. a comprehensive uh, yeah. uh, liberal arts program. So yeah. uh, I, I, I really think it's it's a very niche uh, program, 
mm. uh, multidisciplinary in nature. Mm. And our students are in high demand. Actually, the student had been uh, hired by, for example, uh, auto industry mm -hmm. uh, and offshore industry, oil industry in Houston. Yeah. Uh, of course, there was, you know, uh, the U.S. Navy, and also the uh, the uh, design firms. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a special uh, program. I think serves the nation uh, in in its special way. Yeah, I think that's a very unique program, and also um, it's a it's not only I think the students. They find a job. It's not. Uh, it's beyond the uh, naval and uh, uh, marine engineering. They actually can work in many, many different uh, sectors. Um, yes. uh, beyond this, yeah. 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 Besides, the marine actually is a big industry, oh. and it's just invisible for many of us, right? We yeah, yeah, saw yeah. all the <laughs> news uh, in the news all the time, and we yeah, don't yeah. see many. But if you look at, if you think about the blue economy, you know. Yeah. It's not just the ships, right? It's yeah. anything to do with the water. So yeah. there's environmental part, and there's also the food, you know, uh, agriculture, uh, the fishery uh, industry. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, and also the energy, you know, renewable energy from water, that's yes, a big yes. part of it. Yeah, yeah. So I think that if we go beyond the ships, uh, there, you know, the, 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 I think the blue economy and the uh, the associated uh, industry that it connect, uh, I think it's tremendous. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for sharing with us uh, your experience, your insight, and also the department uh, with our audience. We really appreciate that, your, your time. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Good luck with everything. <laughs>